Good morning and a very warm welcome to our service on Sunday the 24th of May. It's really great to have you with us wherever you're watching this from today. You are very welcome. You might be aware that we are in the period called Thy Kingdom Come, which is a global initiative. It's a time that really invites us into prayer. And to mark that, on Tuesday, we're going to have our own prayer evening. If we'd been in church, we would have been having a prayer evening on Tuesday anyway. But I'm going to ask people to pray in your own homes. Uh, pray for whatever you would like to pray. If you want to go back to the Trello board that we used, um, the, the prayer room that we used for our 24-hour prayer, that is still there. That will stay open uh, and that has got some resources for thy kingdom come. One of the things it suggests is praying for five people, five of your friends who are not Christians at the moment, people that you would love to get to know Jesus. So pray for those five people in this week and pray for them beyond this week. Keep praying for them, knowing that God works. And so can I invite you on Tuesday, it'll be 7.30 to pray with us for half an hour, for an hour, as we come and pray together in this period of thy kingdom come. Next Sunday is Pentecost. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that at the end of the service because we want as many people as possible to be part of that service. And so this morning, as we come to worship, let us pray. Loving God, on this Sunday, we thank you for all that you've given us. We thank you for our church family who are gathered in different places today. We thank you for our own family and friends and for the support that they are to us. As we worship you today, Father, just help us to worship you with all that we are, to listen to what you're saying to us today and to hear that message for ourselves, but also for us as a church collectively. So we pray during this time in our homes, in our gardens, wherever we are today, that you will send your Holy Spirit and we pray, come, Holy Spirit, come. Amen. So Chris will lead us in our reading. Today's reading is taken from Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 1 and verses 4 to 14. This is the text of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to the surviving elders among the exiles and to the priests the prophets, and all the other people Nebuchadnezzar had carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage, so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there, do not decrease. Also, seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you will prosper too. Yes, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Do not let the prophets and diviners amongst you deceive you. Do not listen to the dreams you encourage them to have. They are prophesying lies to you in my name. I have not sent them, declares the Lord. But this is what the Lord says. When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfil my good promise to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have banished you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. Well, good morning, everybody. 
I would love to be able to say it's lovely to see you all but sadly that's not the case and it isn't going to be for some time. But we will meet again as our Queen and as Vera Lynn said yes we will meet again. So it's been an exhausting time in so many ways. During the last few weeks we've all experienced loss of some sort. Some of us were looking forward to holidays and they've had to be cancelled. Some of us were expecting things that haven't materialised. Some of us have been put on furlough and lost our jobs. For some, they haven't been able to do their exams. And for some, there has been poor health and perhaps even some of us have lost someone close. So it's been a real time of instability and for many it's caused a lot of anxiety and worry. Our familiar world changed almost overnight with the lockdown and things felt very strange and foreign. Something we'd never experienced before. Most of us won't have liked it, including me. And perhaps it's left us all wondering where our Christian faith stands in all of this. So today I want to think about where we are under three headings. This has been a time of disaster. It's posed lots of dilemmas and it calls for us to make decisions. Our home group have been working through the Bible Project series, which has been looking at what the Bible has to say about this kind of situation. In the sixth century BC, Judah was conquered and Jerusalem was captured by a foreign power. God's people found themselves in a very unfamiliar and a very alien world. They were taken into exile in Babylon. Especially traumatic for them was the destruction of the temple. This was the focus of their religious life and it was gone. They lost everything they knew and loved and they had to move into this foreign land with a un very unfamiliar culture. The world they knew they had to leave behind. It seemed like a disaster. God had promised them that they would be a great nation and yet he'd allowed them to be taken into exile. So where was God in all of this? This wasn't supposed to happen. Now this isn't a perfect parallel to where we are in our situation today, but it is interestingly similar. We haven't been conquered by a foreign army. We're not in that kind of battle, but we are in a battle with a virus. And it's a virus that has shaken our world. The freedoms that we would normally have have been severely restricted and curtailed. And we've lost a lot of things. We've lost the ability to socialise, the ability to be free to go out when and where we want, to travel freely. And we're in a, a time where many people feel anxious and unnerved. So very much like the Israelites, we're in a new and different place. Some time ago, I went into Peterborough Prison, not as an inmate, I hasten to add, but I went to help the chaplain run a course for the guests in the prison called Living With Loss. Now we've just been talking about the things we've lost and many of the guests in the prison have lost, lost similar things. They lost their freedom, obviously, but they lost control by being in prison. They lost privacy. They lost the ability to go out in the fresh air whenever they want. They lost time because doing time meant they were getting older. They lost hope 
and many of them lost their identity. So some of these losses are not so dissimilar to what we're experiencing now. And the course we ran enabled the guests at the prison to explore their losses and to try and find a way through. <clears throat> and perhaps we all need to work out how we're going to handle our losses and how to find a way through. Some of what we're experiencing is a like a grief reaction and we need to have time to mourn that and that's okay. It's absolutely right to be upset and sad about our losses and to take time to mourn. But we also have to find a way forward and that brings us to a dilemma. So perhaps the dilemma we're facing at the moment as Christians is twofold. Where is God in all of this? Where is God in a coronavirus world? And can we still be faithful to God and trust him in all circumstances? Returning to the passage, we read that Jeremiah starts with reminding the people who God is. I recently listened to a sermon by Pete Hughes of King's Cross Church in London. And he said, maybe we're actually asking the wrong question. It shouldn't be, where is God in a coronavirus world? But rather, who is God in a coronavirus world? And in fact, Jeremiah reminded the people that had gone into exile who God was. He is the Lord of heaven's armies. He is the God of Israel. They needed to be reminded of that, to be reminded that God is in control. He is in charge of the battle. He's not abandoned them. And the same applies to us today. God is still sovereign. He's still in control and he stands with us. He mourns with us. He weeps with us. He stands beside us. He knows our inmost thoughts and feelings and he understands us in a way no one else possibly can. He is with us in the struggle. You remember the story of Lazarus and Mary and Martha. When Lazarus died, Mary and Martha were obviously extremely upset and very angry that Jesus hadn't come when, he, when they'd asked him. They felt very let down by him. He could have come earlier and he didn't. But when he did come, he didn't offer them ex any explanation. But what he did do was he stood and he wept with them. And God weeps with us. He understands us. Where is God in all of this? Psalm 34, 18. He is the one who is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. So God is with us and he is for us and he invites us to trust him. Jeremiah goes on to tell the people that they need to embrace their captivity. Now that must have seemed like a hard call to them. But God had allowed the exile to take place and he wanted the people to trust him and to make a new life for themselves and to make it work well. One of the people we know well from the Bible who was deported to Babylon was Daniel. Daniel was a young man who found himself in a place he probably didn't want to be. He was from a well-to-do family, he was strong, he was healthy, he was good looking and he was intelligent. The world must have been very much his oyster. And then he finds himself in this very new and different place. What were his prospects now? Well, God had a plan for him, as we know. And God wanted him in royal service and in a high position in the land. And God used that situation 
for his purposes. But Daniel had a choice. He could have thrown in the towel with the um, Babylonians and, and adopted their culture and their ways and their languages and their gods. But although he compromised and he did allow himself to be educated in Babylonian ways, he didn't compromise on his faith. And so we've got a decision. We're thrown into a very different world and we could decide, well, I don't know where God is in this. I think he's abandoned us. It's not fair. And we could abandon our faith altogether. Or we could embrace this season. We could hold on to what all that is good about our faith. But we could also reimagine what this new season might look like both now and when this pandemic is over. So God through Jeremiah tells the people to construct a new life for themselves. They're not to sit back and mope but they're to energize themselves into creating a new normal. In verse 5 God says build homes Build houses for yourselves, plant gardens, eat their produce, have children. Sounds quite a lot like what's going on at the moment. We may be in a place we would not choose to be. We may feel we're not achieving very much at the moment. But we do have an opportunity. We have an opportunity to do things differently now and in the future when this pand pandemic is over. So there was going to be a new normal for the people of God. And this, did, this extended to their captors as well as to themselves. God told the people, work for the peace and prosperity of the city where I have sent you. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it pros prospers, so will you. Here was a totally new concept for the Israelites to pray for their captors. God says the prosperity of the land is a top priority. I want you to pray for it. And that must be, have been a hard call for them in a land that was not their own. How much easier for us. And I believe that um, there's been a huge amount of prayer going up for our land. We had our own 24 hours of prayer last weekend. And there has been much prayer happening. And we pray, we pray for the prosperity of our land. It was wonderful to see the blessing song by, um, organised by Tim Hughes. And the, brilliant that Boris Johnson commended that. And that blesses our city, our cities, our land, our homes. It blesses us as well. It's a wonderful message. It's a message of of prayer for the peace and prosperity of our land. So let's join in with that prayer. So just as in exile, God encourages the people to move forward and recreate new lives for themselves. We have to decide how we're going to reimagine our new normal. Are we going to live differently? both now and in the future, have we realised that we don't need all the material things that we normally think we need? That actually friends and family are more important? Spending time with them is so precious. One of the challenges of loss is choosing what we're going to leave behind and what we're going to pick up again. I read a quote by someone called Dave Hollis who says, in the rush to return to normal, consider which parts of normal are worth rushing back to. I think that's quite profound and that applies to everything in our lives. What we do with our time, our money, our social life, the environment, 
and our church life. Loss can actually be positive in encouraging us to get rid of the old, let things go and bring in the new. So that can be personal lifestyle changes for us. And it can be changes in the way we do things together as church. So has it made us rethink what church might look like? Is our way of worship going to change? Have new ways opened up for us to connect with people and with God very differently? Are we extending love in a new way? I think many of those things have changed and maybe we want those things to continue. It's been so encouraging to see that God is already at work. Krish Kandaya recently wrote a wonderful article in the Times the, and it was called The Benefits of Going to Church in Your Pyjamas. I love that. Sometimes loss brings relief. You can go to church in your pyjamas. You can even leave the service and nobody will notice. You can stop listening to me if you like um, and go and make a cup of tea. Why don't you? If you're listening um, not in real time, you could fast forward and go on to the next thing. So this is lighthearted and amusing, but the important thing has been that more people are joining church services than ever. Why? Because it's become easier. God is on the move. This opportunity to do things differently, which has been forced upon us, is actually producing fruit. A survey by Tear Fund showed that 24% of British adults have watched and listened to a church service since the lockdown. That's huge. Loads of people have been Googling prayer. There's a real hunger and a real seeking for God. God is definitely at work. Amongst churches, there's been an explosion of creativity in the arts, in digital work, children's work, youth work, as well as in practical support for people. And Sarah was encouraging us last week to recognise and use our gifts. And perhaps in this time, God has been speaking to you about your gifts. Things are changing. Are there ways that you can use your gifts in this season? We need to be looking at new ways of doing church and this is not an opportunity to do so. The trauma of the exile forced the Israelites to continue to trust God in very different circumstances. They had to look at what a new kind of normal might be. They had to work out how to settle into that time and still maintain their hope that God would restore them back to Jerusalem. And God gave them a promise. And we all know that, that very familiar verse, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a future and a hope. And that promise is for us too. It's hard to see that when we're in the midst of disaster, when we're in the midst of unanswered prayer, when we're in insecure times, when we're in times of loss. But God offers us that hope. He is for us. And of course, we all want to get back to church. But let's remember, we are the church. The people of God are the church. And maybe it's time to rethink and to, and to perhaps consider that God may be calling us to do things differently. Let's just not press the repeat button like a popular radio programme, but let's be creative. What shall we leave behind? What shall we pick up? What shall we change? 
The choice is ours and it's an amazing opportunity. I want to finish uh, by telling you about an article I was reading in Christianity magazine. It's written by John Lennox, who's a professor of mathematics at, Os at Oxford University. He explains that the coronavirus is so-called because under the electron microscope it resembles a crown. Now, a crown is obviously a symbol of power and authority. And this virus has had huge power over our world, despite the fact that it's invisible to the naked eye. It has indeed created a disaster. Where or who is God in this? He is actually wearing another crown, another corona, the crown of thorns. That was forced upon him and he partakes of our suffering. It's because of his death and resurrection that we can receive forgiveness and peace and hope. He promises a world where there will no longer be any suffering. Our dilemma is we have to choose to believe this and to trust him, whatever befalls. If we do this, then we can stop looking for what we've lost and we can move forwards. And I do believe that God may be wanting to urge us onto new things, things we hadn't imagined, hadn't expected, hadn't even dreamt of. God is already on the move. He is already working. Let's join in with what he is doing. We are now going to move on to a time of reflection. And we're going to listen to a song composed and sung by Claire and accompanied by Andrew.
Father God, your prophet Jeremiah wrote to your people in exile, encouraging them to pray for the peace and prosperity of the city to which you had carried them. In our current time of isolation, we ask for that peace and prosperity inside our homes, our own places of exile. Help us to use this period to spend the time that we would previously have been out and about working and socialising to focus on building relationships with you and with those in our family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be with us in our fear and instability. We fear this illness. Falling prey to it ourselves or losing those we love to it seeing them suffer. We fear the feeling of feeling trapped, enclosed in our homes and isolated from friends and family. We fear being alone, spending time by ourselves in our own company. Help us to acknowledge our fears to you, but to hand them over to you instead of becoming slaves to them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us calm and an appreciation of our immediate surroundings. Be with us as we struggle with technology, with learning new ways of keeping in touch with our loved ones. Remind us of those we know who may be in need of a phone call or other form of contact. Give us hope and wisdom in our everyday decisions. Turn our fear into faithfulness. Our uncertainty into the, in the world into solid trust and certainty in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for leaders around the world at this time. Give them wisdom as they make difficult decisions. Around the world, countries, countries are responding differently to this virus and are at different stages in its progression. Help those who are later to suffer from it to learn from those who have been suffering for longer. Help leaders from each country to act with their people's best interests at heart. In this country, we pray that as we begin to ease the lockdown, that people respond sensibly and that we are able to emerge safely. We pray that the new world into which we evolve may be one of deeper awareness of one another and in which your presence blazes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick or suffering in hospitals, care homes, their own homes or elsewhere. Be with those who care for them and give them your peace and courage as they look after others. We give thanks for the NHS and the other key workers who are fighting on the front line, risking their own health to carry out their jobs. We pray for all of those who have lost loved ones through either this illness or other means. We pray for all those unable to attend funerals or say goodbye in ways they would have done previously. Show them new ways to do so and be with them in their grief. We thank you that you are a faithful God. You were with your people in exile, with Daniel, and you are with us. As we reimagine how to do things and find new ways of living our everyday lives, help us to continue to practice our faith and to trust that we are in your hands, even though we are in different circumstances. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done, on earth as in heaven. 
give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you so much to everyone who's taken part in our service today. People keep coming, commenting to us how wonderful it is to see the church family, even though we can't be with them. So many people are taking part in our services. So thank you to each and every one of them, each and every one of you for what you are doing at this time. And I want to make a wider invitation today for next Sunday. Next Sunday is Pentecost. It is the birthday of the church. And so we're gonna celebrate, we're gonna have a party. So I'm going to invite you to dress up, to wear your best clothes, whatever you would wear to a party. Get them out of the wardrobe, shake them off, and we're going to have a party together. It'll be in our own homes. Um, but I want you to all be part of the service next week. So if you can dress up in your best clothes this week, take a photograph of yourself or your family or whoever your group are that you're with in your homes at this time. And will you send that to me this week by Thursday, which is the 28th of May? And then we're going to put that together because we want to see our church family. We want to celebrate together. So please just take a photo on your phone or your camera and send it to me and we'll put that together for next Sunday. And then as we gather next Sunday together, can I invite you to dress up in your party clothes? Dress up as we celebrate together. A wider part of our church family this week is also being involved in some walking for Mission Possible UK. Many of you know Richard and he's doing a walk um, from, I think it's Lindisfarne or slightly higher above, right the way through down to Cornwall. He's obviously not doing this because he can't do this, but he's doing it round his house and he's doing a certain number of miles every day, either on his exercise or around his home. And so on Saturday, we want to stand in solidarity with him. And there are many things that you can do and there'll be more information coming out on the newsletter about this. Please pray for Richard as he's doing this. It's a huge number of miles every day. If you want to give to the work of Mission Possible, who are supporting Rwanda and all the things that are going on there at that time, then please do that. If you want to walk with Richard, then on that day, on Saturday, he's going to be walking 12 miles. And so if you want to walk one mile, half a mile, 12 miles, take a picture of yourself walking and we'll put that on our social media and make sure that Richard can see that or pray for Richard. It would just be wonderful if he knows that he's got our prayers with him as he tries to do this wonderful thing at this time. So I give thanks today for our church family in many different forms. And I look forward to next Sunday to seeing your photos and to sharing in our celebration of the birthday of the church. And so a final blessing. In this week, Father, we pray thy kingdom come. We pray that in all the places that we are, whether it's at home, whether it's at shops, whether it is with those people that we are with this week, may we be the people that bring your kingdom to that place. Will you bless us? Will you give us the words to say to people? Will you enable us to speak of you, to speak of the wonder of you? And all that we do this week, Father, keep us safe and bless us. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope that whatever you're doing this week, you have a great week. Stay safe and be blessed. Okay, let's bless the name of the Lord in this place today. One voice, one choir, coming before one God, one name above every name, one throne. Blessed be the name of the Lord.
Blessed be 